Hello, welcome to the topic 6 of the unit Fundamentals of Information Technology. And for this week, we're going to discuss chapter 14 of the book Computer Fundamentals entitled Operating Systems. In this chapter, you will learn about definition and need for operating system or OS, main functions of an OS, commonly used mechanism for process management, memory management, file management, device management, security, and command interpretation. And you will learn also some commonly used OS capability enhancement software and some popular operating systems. Let's proceed to the definition needs and functions of an OS. What is an OS? Stated here, integrated set of programs that controls the resources. What are these resources that we're talking about? We have the brain of the computer, the CPU, the memory. Take note that we have two types of memory. We have primary and secondary memory, I.O. devices, and other registers of a computer system. And also, OS provides its users with an interface or virtual machine that is more convenient to use than the bare machine. So when OS acts as an interface or lies between the computer hardware and the computer user so that the data can be manipulated, that will become information. And we have two primary objectives on an OS. First one, making a computer system convenient to use. And second one, managing the resources of a computer system. Have a look with this uh, diagram. It shows the logical architecture of a computer system. We have the computer hardware and lies between computer hardware and software application is the operating system. So you need to install an operating system and computer hardware so that other system software and application programs can be used by the users. So operating system layer hides details of hardware from programmers and other users and provides them with a convenient interface for using the system. So without an operating system, computer hardware cannot be manipulated by the users. So what are the main functions of an OS? We have here process management, memory management, file management, device management, security, and command interpretation. So let's discuss one by one what is this process management all about. But before discussing process management, let us learn first what are the parameters for measuring system performance. So we have here the term throughput. It refers to the amount of work that the system is able to do per unit of time. The other parameter is known as turnaround time. So it refers to the interval from the time of submission of a job to the system for processing up to the time of completion of the job. And another term here is response time. It refers to the interval from the time of submission of a job to the system for processing up to the time the first response for the job is produced by the system. So take note of these terms. These are the criteria or parameters how to measure system performance. Let's proceed to the process management, the first function of an OS. So process is also known as job. It is a program in execution. So when we say process management, it is a module of an operating system, manages the processes submitted to the system in a manner to minimize idle time of processors of the system. Here are the process management mechanisms in early systems. Long time ago, we had manual loading system. So jobs were manually loaded one after another in a computer by the computer operator. Then the computing system evolved. It became batch processing mechanism. So here, batch of jobs was submitted together to the computer and job-to-job -job transition was done automatically by the operating system. And it evolved again. It became job control language. So here, control statements were used to identify a new job in a batch of jobs and to determine its resource 
requirements. So an example here in a job control statement in batch processing is the programming language known as COBOL or Common Business Oriented Language. So there will be a set of job statements to be loaded and the instructions will be by batch processing. So we have a term uniprogramming, it's a uni1. So in the main memory, the first will be occupied with the operating system and another part of it will become user job and the CPU. So let's discuss this uniprogramming. So a uniprogramming, a job does not need CPU for the entire duration of its processing. So what happened here? Depending on CPU utilization during the course of processing, jobs, there will be two types. So we have CPU bound jobs. So you can say CPU bound jobs, which mostly perform computations with little I.O. operations. But if the job will become I.O. bound jobs, which mostly perform input output operations with little computation. So here in uniprogramming system, CPU will become idle whenever the currently executing job performs I.O. operations. So we have another term here, multi-programming. Multi means many, two or more programming. So multi-programming is interleaved execution of two or more different and independent programs by a computer. So the in multi-programming enables two or more user programs to reside simultaneously in the main memory and it will carry out their interleaved execution. So with multiple user programs residing simultaneously in main memory, whenever a user program that was executing goes to perform input output operations, the operating system allocates CPU to another user program in main memory. So in multi-programming, several user programs share CPU time to keep it busy. Note that multi-programming does not mean execution of instructions from several programs simultaneously. So we have here the diagram of a multi-programming. So this is the typical scenario of jobs in a multi-programming system. In multi-programming, we have three states. We have your diagram. So if a job will be created, it will go to the red queue. So if the job will be allocated for the CPU, it will become running states. If the job will be completed, it will go out. But if the job will wait for an input output, it will go to block states. If the I.O. register will be ready, it will go back to the ready queue. So take note of this three states of jobs in the main memory in a multi-programming system. Here are the requirements of multi-programming systems. First, it requires large memory. Second one, memory protection. Third one, job status preservation. And the fourth one, proper job mix of CPU and I.O bound jobs and of course we need CPU scheduling. There's also the process control block in process management. This block will have the process identifier, process state, program counter, values of various or different CPU registers, accounting and scheduling information, and I.O status information. So what is the purpose of this PCB? It is used to preserve the job status of each loaded process in a multi-programming system.